Welcome everybody to another episode of Shot in the Dark. I'm your host, John Cena Evil here. Let's get right down to it. First episode of 2022, so a lot of new shows here to talk about. AW Dark Elevation, this is from Daily's Place, starts with Rio defeating Valentina Rossi with the running double knees. Andrade El Idolo defeats JP Harlow, who's making his debut by submission, with a new finisher that he calls La Muerta, where pretty much he cranks back on the arms and the shoulders. Looks pretty devastating. Megan Bain defeated Layla Gray. Uh, Bain has been on Dark before, but she is getting her first victory here. Uh, she's, she's using more of her indie look here, by the way, which is kind of like a Greek goddess. She comes out with like a, a headdress on. She has two servants that present her out. Uh, she's been doing this gimmick in Ohio Valley Wrestling as well as Northeast Wrestling. And she gets her first win with a nice-looking tombstone pile driver. Scorpio Sky defeats Ray Jazz very quickly with the TKO. The Dark Order's John Silver and Alex Reynolds defeat the team of Mike Orlando and Shane Stetson. Uh, the entire match, Mark Henry, Tony Schiavone, and Paul White, they kept trying to use DC superhero names within the match, saying things like, um, you know, he's as quick as a flash, he's hitting him with a Superman punch, things like that. Until, for whatever reason, Paul White just said Hulk, and uh, totally messed up with the whole Marvel DC confusion here. Alex Reynolds gets the pen on Stetson after a cutter German suplex combo. Jake Atlas making his AW debut defeats Sir Pentico. Atlas looking impressive as always gets a quick win here with the Rainbow DDT. Uh, later on in the show, Mark Henry references how after the match, um, Tony Khan came out and offered Jake Atlas a contract to AW, and it was later reported. Uh, online that it is official that Jake Atlas is all elite. So it's good to hear, especially after him getting released from NXT and then him having that match in uh, Ring of Honor against uh, Russ Tyler and uh, having a little bit of an injury and kind of like um, pretty much saying that he's going to retire from wrestling. So it's good to see that he uh, had a little turnaround here and it uh, looks like AEW might be his home now, which is really good to hear. So hopefully he'll get the right push. Sky Blue defeated Angelica Risk with the full Nelson into a face slam. Looks very impressive, but the entire match, Eddie Kingston was complaining because Sky Blue spells her name wrong. That was pretty much the entire uh, story of this match. Jay Lethal defeated Troy Hollywood in the main event. My favorite part here was Jay Lethal coming out. Uh, he's from Elizabeth, New Jersey, which is a city here in New Jersey. And uh, the way that Justin Roberts says it, was hilarious. I, I can't do it justice. I'll try, but you have to go back and watch it. But basically, he says from Elizabeth, New Jersey, as if he's from, as if he's a macho man, the way he's like from Elizabeth, New Jersey. So pretty funny. Uh, go back and watch it. But Troy Hollywood's making his debut here. He's best known for his time in WWN, uh, FIP. He also wrestled in GCW, uh, as well as MLW, Ring of Honor. He's been around for a while. Um, and he is one of Jay Lethal's students here. So that's pretty much the story for this match as well and he got a lot of offense in here hanging in there with lethal but lethal does get the win out of nowhere with the lethal injection tuesday's AEW dark also from daily's place uh we'll probably be here for a while tony knees defeated alan angels with the running knee in the corner after a pretty good six minute match on commentary here taz was kind of like talking about the idea of um scouting and recruiting um he didn't outright say it but it could be insinuated that maybe tony knees might find his way in team taz which i kind of would like Anna Jay gets a win on Dream Girl Ellie after about a minute with the Queen Slayer. The Gun Club defeated the team of Orlando Perez, Austin Green, and Donnie Primetime. Austin pins Primetime after the quick draw. A huge size difference between Perez and Austin Green. You kind of have to look it up and just see a picture or a video of it. It's pretty funny. Uh, Primetime is also known as Kung Fu Donnie Janela. Marina Shafir gets her first win in AEW, defeating Valentina Rossi very quick with a leg triangle choke. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if Shafir makes her way to AEW officially as well. Bobby Fish defeated Ryzen with a spinning kick in about two minutes. Six women to match as Layla Hirsch, Chris Statlander, and Red Velvet defeated Renee Michelle, Sophia Castillo, and Marina Tucker. Uh, Hirsch made Michelle tap out with an arm dar after she blind tagged herself in and kind of uh, shoved Statlander off. So to continue in this little rivalry between Hirsch and Statlander. The Acclaimed defeated Blanco Loco and Axton Ray. Max Caster's freestyle had a Nancy Reagan joke and said that the Acclaimed will be the next tag team champions in 2022. Anthony Bowens pins Loco after the mic drop from Max Caster. Jamie Hayter defeated Maddie Rankowski with a brutal looking brain buster. Dante Martin defeated Chandler Hopkins impressively with the nosedive. Sammy Guevara defeated Ho Ho Loon. Uh, Loon making his debut. You may remember him from the Cruiserweight Classic as well as being signed to NXT for a year after that. Sammy gets to win with the Crossroads as a uh, assigned to Cody Rhodes ahead of their upcoming rematch at Battle of the Belts this Saturday. Powerhouse Hobbs defeated Cole Cabana with the Torture Rack. And in the main event, Brian Pillman Jr. defeated J.D. Drake with his springboard clothesline. 
NXT UK had another Best of 2021 show. This was a New Year's edition hosted by Pretty Deadly, so you get your resolutions for the entire NXT UK roster. And they showed a couple matches, including Pretty Deadly defeated Gallows for the NXT UK Tag Team titles. A look back at the Walter and uh, his UK title reign. Uh, they also showed him losing to Dragunov at TakeOver 36. Then you also had Ia Dragunov defeating Joe Coffey and Rampage Brown in the uh, number one contenders match that led to that TakeOver match. Impact Wrestling also had another best of show, but on um, behind the Impact, they did have one original match with Black Taurus and Crazy Steve of Decay defeated VSK and Zicky Dice with Taurus pinning Dice after a pile driver, and VSK and Zicky Dice had a little disagreement after the match. They showed a couple matches from 2021, including Moose defeating Eddie Edwards at Turning Point, uh, The Inspiration's debut versus Rosemary and Havoc, and actually right before this, it was a backstage segment between The Inspiration and The Influence, where AJ, I'm sorry, Jay Badal was introduced as The Inspiration's new photographer and said that he is J with an I, which Caleb with a K got pretty upset about. So it looks like uh, both of these women tag teams now have a uh, manager or photographer, whatever you want to call it, in their corner. They also had Kenny Omega defeat Sammy Callahan from Slammiversary. They showed Jonah taking out Josh Alexander in his debut match against Jay Vidal. Josh Alexander went to the Ultimate X match at Slammiversary. Rich Swan defeated Moose at Sacrifice. The Men's Men of the Year match was announced as Josh Alexander versus TJP, which I agree for Impact for sure. So they showed bits of that match. And they also announced that the Knockouts Tag Team of the Year is Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering. And the Male Wrestler of the Year is Josh Alexander. But the show ends with a little segment with a... Uh, Brandy, Lauren, and uh, Kimberly talking about where Mother is, where Mother is, and they finally reveal Mother, aka Sue Young, and they reveal that she is pregnant, and this is legit pregnant, so congratulations to Sue Young. NWA Power comes back with a new episode here, with Jamie Stanley defeated Miguel Robles, Alex Taylor, and Jeremiah Plunkett in a fatal four-way match. This was a Junior Heavyweight Championship tournament qualifying match as the NWA USA show starts this Saturday on YouTube. On that note, it was announced that NWA Power will be returning on YouTube on a slip on a bit slate, uh, bit of a delay basically because they're going to be showing their shows on Tuesday on Fight like regular, but they're going to be uploaded on YouTube that following Friday while the new show NWA USA will be on Saturday. So pretty cool to see NWA return on YouTube in some capacity. We also had Jordan Clearwater and Marche Rocket defeating Scion in a handicap match. Kylie Ray and Tootie Lynn defeated Camille and Missa Kate. And the story of the match was that Camille didn't want to be in this match or tag in, which causes Kylie Ray making Kate tap out to her cross face. And after the match, Camille gets upset at her and walks away. May Valentine was backstage with Nick Aldis, Mickey James, and Mayweather with a promoting the new NWA USA show. And she questions if this means a new partnership between the two, which Mayweather kind of deflects and says that that wasn't particularly the case here. Uh, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett had a, in, a little interaction with Colby Carino and his tag team of the Fixers, which leads to a match when Matt Taven defeated Wrecking Ball Ligurski after a sunset powerbomb. Matt Cardona cuts a promo and says that when he used to be young and turned on NWA, he thought it sucked and he still thinks it does and he is here to change it. So he recommends having theme music and pyro for himself as well as a Titantron and he wants to rename NWA to the MCWA, the Matt Cardona Wrestling Alliance. And then he brings up his past with Trevor Murdoch and talks about how back in the day, I guess when they were both in WWE, how Trevor Murdoch used to bully him and not give him handshakes. And then he starts joking about uh, Trevor Murdoch's social media presence and says he only has like 10,000 followers compared to his 2 million followers uh, on Twitter. So yeah, that's the storyline going in here that Matt Cardona after everything, is much more popular than Trevor Murdoch is. Natalia Markova defeated Paola Blades with a beautiful disaster, which is like a spinning kick in the corner. Completely destroys her in this match. And the main event was La Rebellion teaming up with Homicide, defeated the team of Jack Stain and The End, aka The Dane Event, with Homicide pinning Peril after a diamond cutter. And as I was about to sh turn the show off, the credits started kind of like glitching out a little bit, so I just thought it was a fight TV issue, as I usually have. But it's actually a video of Sal Renaro interrupting them, and he is now looking possessed, professes his love to Father James Mitchell, and he starts laughing like a maniac. So after drinking the blood of a couple weeks ago, it looks like this is the uh, storyline that they're going with, with Sal Renaro being possessed now. By the way, shout out to Sal Renaro. I did see your cameo on WWE Day 1 in the audience, so that was kind of uh, funny to see that. We go to 205 Live, where Idris Inofi gets a win over Guru Raj with a shooting star press. Very nice looking here. Amari Miller defeated the debuting Nikita Lyons. Now, Lyons is the former Faith the Lioness from Woman of Wrestling. She's also a singer, dancer, actress, model, MMA fighter, boxer, you name it. She has a lot of hats. Uh, and actually showed Amari Miller's parents who were in the crowd and said it was the first time that they get to see her wrestle live. Lyons had like a real militant martial arts type look here, but Miller gets the win with her stunner into the knee. I see a big future for Nikita Lyons, though. And the main event, Dante Shen defeated Draco Anthony with his finisher that Nigel, uh, Nigel McGuinness calls Dante's Inferno. New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong did not have a show this week, as obviously their attention was probably on the Wrestle Kingdom shows. But 
New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong is returning soon, so be on the lookout for that next week. Ring of Honor had a best of 2021 show as well as showing Bandito defeated Ray Horace and Flamita. Jonathan Gresham defeated Brody King and the OGK defeated the Briscoes from Death Before Dishonor. And this might be their final, final show. I know I said it last week, but this one actually ends with a message saying things such as special thanks to our dedicated fans and everyone that supports Ring of Honor. Thank to the gentlemen of Honor, Kerry Silken, Joe Koff, Gary Juster, Jim Corner, and the rest of the Ring of Honor staff and team Ring of Honor. And it has a last message that says thank you to every wrestler that has stepped into the Ring of Honor ring and to every dedicated person that has worked so hard to showcase the best wrestling on the planet you will all have our eternal gratitude for proving that honor will always be real so if that's the end goodbye ring of honor for now on main event we had t-bar defeated sal sergio better known as mambo Ita- italiano in the indies he has he has appeared on nxt before and veer mahan as he keeps trying to find his way to monday night raw defeated shelton benjamin the WWE Network editions of the week were another episode of ICW Fight Club, including NXT UK's Wolfgang defeating BT Gun, as well as another episode of WXW We Love Wrestling. That is it for me this week. I will see you guys here next week for another episode of Shot in the Dark. Mm-hmm.